I have this conversation with my clients all the time. Jeff, I can't get my team to prospect to create new opportunities. And I ask to look at the comp plan and bing, the light bulb goes on over their head and I know where we need to go next. My name's Jeff Bajoric, and my career in sales has been a hell of a ride. And I want to bring you along with me. If you prefer to sell things at a premium, if you never want to win a deal on price, rethink the way you sell. Welcome back to the show. My name is Jeff Bajoric. I'm your host. I'm here to help you rethink the way you sell. And season three is all about rethinking the way you prospect. And today I want to talk about incentives because you're probably getting them wrong. Had this conversation a while back with a client and I'll spare you all the details, but I actually wasn't working with the sales team at this point. I was working with some of the operators and the selling that they need to do in order to, you know, in the personal uh, professional services industry. And, um, but I was having a conversation with an exec and he says, Jeff, we just had our employee satisfaction survey go out, engagement, things like that. Who do you think was the best and most engaged department? And I said, business development. And he said, yeah. Can you believe that? I said, yeah. They have great jobs. They have great autonomy to do what they need to do. They do a lot of entertaining. They're compensated well. The business is growing. Like It's, it's, it's a really good gig. I've seen a lot of gigs. This is a really good gig. And he keeps saying, but they're not responsible for the new growth. They're, they're, they're spending too much time with existing referral sources and clients. Like They're babysitting our best customers and getting credit for all the growth. And I said, okay. You're right. It's helpful to agree with executives, at least validate their point when you're working with them, right? And I said, but here's where I'm going to push back. I will always, always, always stand up for a salesperson who is maximizing their comp plan that was put in front of them. And I said, here's the deal. All they're doing is hitting their number, which means they're getting their bonuses, which means they're doing exactly what you're compensating them to do. And if you don't like it, then change the plan. Now, I'm not talking about ripping the comp plan out from underneath your reps and, you know, asking them to do something that's completely foreign to them. That would be unfair. It would be patently unfair. And you will have a mutiny on your hands if you do that. But if you're not getting the behavior that you want, you should take a look at the behavior that you incentivize. Sales leaders all over the place are frustrated, even pissed off that their reps are doing exactly what they're being paid to do. Think about that for just a second. If you want new accounts, if you want prospecting into new opportunities, you should make sure your compensation plan and your business plan for the year reflect that. But if you're just compensating someone based on growth, if you're just compensating someone based on overall revenue, if there is no differentiator or at least no kicker for new business versus old business, you're going to get a whole lot of account babysitting. Now, let me back up for a second. This may seem foreign to some of you who live in LinkedIn land explicitly, and you don't realize that there actually are an overwhelming majority of salespeople out there who take the opportunity from creation and identification all the way through customer success you know, there's identifying the opportunities, there's creating the opportunities, there's carrying through the sales process, closing a deal and customer service all wrapped up into one position. You got to imagine that those salespeople are not going to want to take the baby that they just stewarded through, you know, adulthood and leave them alone. They're not going to want to take that opportunity and just give up on it because that opportunity pays them very, very well. And last I checked, there's a lot of justification for that. The money spends the same. The growth is easier to come by. Customer acquisition costs are much, much lower, and it's a whole lot more comfortable. There's a lot of momentum going in that direction. I'm going to point out this too. The psychology, probably the very psychology that you're training your reps to use to avoid the fear of losing something rather than acquire the satisfaction of progressing, you are triggering that by telling your reps that they need to give up on the accounts that are paying them so well. All to grow in a different way for the same amount of money. Wait, hold on. I don't get it. Your salespeople are confused because you as the leader are not clearly communicating in your actions, 
in your communication and your meetings and your accountability, which we'll get into in another episode in a couple of days here, and with your incentives. Look, you know how to prospect. I know you know how to prospect, but something still gets in your way. As a matter of fact, I've identified eight reasons that you and your team are not creating more sales opportunities. I put them together as a white paper to serve as a companion of this season of the Rethink the Way You Sell podcast. Go to jeffbajorek.com forward slash eight reasons to download your copy and the self-assessment that is included in that white paper so you know where you can make maximal impact right away to improve your prospecting results. Now back to the show. You're creating friction in the process, friction that is preventing your reps from doing what they need to do. Don't do that. Here's what you do instead. I'm not just going to create a problem and then I'll give you at least a sliver of a solution. Here's what you do. Have clear communication. Have a really good incentive structure. Take a look at your comp plan. I know you want to avoid it because it feels like a quagmire. You'd rather just leave it alone. You'd rather complain about it like your reps do. Ah, oh, it's out of my control, you know? No, it's not. And if it's out of your control, it's, it's out of your control because you're not willing to say something about it. If it is inhibiting your business, it is your responsibility to say something about it. So take that comp plan all the way up the chain as far as you need to go. Explain to leadership that this isn't incentivizing the right kind of behavior and it is thus impacting the results that you're getting. But there are a lot of ways you can compensate this. You can have a bounty program. You know, you can pay up flat uh, finder fee or, or, or opening fee account registration fee, whatever it is for new accounts that are open. You can increase the commission percentage on new business versus old business. You can uh, withhold part of the bonuses. Maybe you don't pay on commission, but you have a, uh, a bonus. Uh, maybe a portion of that percentage of that bonus is, you know, based on new account acquisition. Just make sure that you recognize a couple of things. One, your people are going to act in the way they're incentivized. Two, you have the power to incentivize them differently. And three, you can be as creative as you need to. You know your people. It doesn't even have to be about money. But the overarching idea here that I, I just... It, you would think it is something that doesn't need to be said, but it needs to be said. The way you compensate your people is going to have a huge impact on what they do. And if they're not doing the things that you want them to do, you might want to take a look at the way they're being compensated. So I hope this sheds a little light for you. If this is something you want to look at, schedule a meeting. Look, you can shoot me an email, jb at jeffbajorek.com. We will put together a meeting. We'll, we'll get together. We'll talk about this for 30 minutes. That The consultation at that point is complimentary. If it makes sense for us to work together after that, then hey, let's do it. But if it doesn't, you, you know, then you'll at least walk away with a little bit of insight and some objective opinion on the way you're compensating your reps and if that is impacting negatively the behavior that you're getting, because it probably is. Don't miss this. It's too easy to overlook but it's too important to overlook at the same time. We're going to talk about accountability in a couple of days here. Really looking forward to digging into that with you. Until then, if you like this show, if it's helpful, hey, share it with a friend. Uh, tell other people about it. That helps me tremendously. And if you've gotten any value out of this, I would really appreciate you just telling somebody about it. That's it. I'll talk to you again very, very soon. And until then, good selling. Rethink the Way You Sell is a Pot About It production. It's mixed and edited by Doug Branson, with music by Blue Dot Sessions and Doug Branson. This podcast is masterminded by Jeff Bajorek. <laughs>